and then we'll get to the live demonstration. So at that point, we'll turn on the camera and you should be able to see the system in place. We will be using just a stuffed mouse to show you the animal setup and how everything works in getting things going. At that point, I'll then share the software of the system so you can see how the data analysis and image acquisition goes in real time. Then I'll turn things over to Val so he can do a brief description of some of the data that they have acquired. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, the next demonstration on June 9th. A quick note in terms of the animal change for today is we're just going to be imaging normal mice at this point. The delivery of the MDX mice was delayed due to COVID. And so we will look at those mice on June 9th. Um, but Dr. Fajardo will go through some of the data from the low dose lithium study that's been started. And again, we'll probably look at those mice again on June 9th. At the end, we'll take a look at some of the questions. If you have questions during the um, demonstration, please put them in the Q&A dialog box as they come up. If we have time, we will answer them during the demonstration. My colleagues um, in the background will help me know if there's questions that have come in. If we don't have time to answer them as we go through, we will have some time at the end to go through them. If we don't get through all of the questions, we will create a Q&A dialog um, transcript that we will send out in the next week or so to everyone. At this point, I do want to launch our first audience poll. Um, so with this one, I'm hoping to get a little bit more information about the type of research that you're working on and if you use DEXA in the work that you're doing. Um, so if you could take just a few seconds to answer these questions, are you working on musculoskeletal disease, metabolic disorders, metabolic bone disorders, arthritis, osteoporosis, drug safety, or others? Um, if other, if you want to enter into the chat window, the different um, areas of research that you're working on, it would be really helpful for us to understand what you're working on. Um, and if you are currently using DEXA in your work, it would be really great to know if you're um, using a system that you're happy with, if you have one of the older systems, for example, the PIXIMA system, or if you're looking to add DEXA uh, to your lab in the future. Okay, I'll give everyone just a few more moments to answer the poll question. Okay, and I'm going to end the polling now. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so getting into how DEXA works for those that aren't using it, I'll spend a little bit of time just to bring everybody up to speed on how um, DEXA does work. Basically, DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. So really what it is, is we're using X-rays and we're looking at the absorption of those x-rays as it passes through tissue. As they pass through tissue, there's going to be different absorption based on whether the tissue is soft tissue, whether it be lean mass or fat mass or bone. And so with DEXA, we want to use two different energy um, energies of the x-ray, so a low energy and a high energy. So we send these two, obviously the sample remains still in between um, each of those samples. And then what we use is um, various equations to solve for if each pixel is designated as bone or soft tissue. And then the soft tissue is further characterized into being lean mass or fat mass. I won't go through the equations. These are quite well documented. If you have any questions about how it works, I'm happy to um, address those either directly with you or in the Q&A towards the end. These are the types of images that you can expect to get out of the system. So these are acquired on a rat with the insight system. So you get your typical x-ray attenuation image on which we can do different regions of interest and um, linear measurements. And we'll be able to see those as we go through the analysis in real time. We then get where the bone um, mineral is um, found to be within the animal. So this is an overlay that we can see. And then the color map shows us where the lean and the fat mass is located. Um, within the animal. And again, once we acquire the image on the mouse that we have today, I'll walk you through looking at these different images, the analysis that we can do, and exporting the data as well. So what type of data do we get? So with DEXA, we're able to get information on the bone, as well as again on that um, non-bone or soft tissue being fat and lean mass. So we can get measures of bone mineral content, as well as bone mineral density, uh, as well as the area of the bone. So we can start to get some information 
um, about um, bone metabolism, what's going on, um, I guess, deep within the structures of the bone, we can also start to look at the fat and the lean mass. Uh, so we can get a measure both in grams and percentage in terms of fat and lean mass, as well as a total mass of the animal as well. So that's a accumulation of the soft tissue as well as the bone. On the right hand side here, you see the software that we'll see a little bit later on. We can draw up to seven regions of interest over different areas to look at specific structures. For example, we wanted to look at the bone metabolism or mineral contents or density in the femur, as well as, for example, the lumbar vertebrae, we can do so using different regions of interest. There's also an exclusion region of interest, which I'll show you later as well, that if the animal had um, an ear tag or something that you wanted to exclude from your measurements, you can easily draw a region of interest over that as well. Okay, a little bit of comparison between DEXA and ECHO NMR. Um, so ECHO NMR is a technique which um, it measures fat and lean mass, as well as water content, but you do not get any information about bone using the ECHO MRI. Scan times are a bit um, longer for echo MRI compared to the DEXA. The benefit of the DEXA over some historical systems is that the scan times using the system are about 25 seconds. So they're quite fast. So the animal is under anesthesia for a very limited amount of time. Um, so with DEXA, the animal does need to be under anesthesia and that's simply to keep the animal still between the low and the high energy uh, measurements, but again, the animal is only going to be under anesthesia for probably a minute to a minute and a half when it's in the knockdown chamber and moving it to the system. And we'll talk through that as we do it today. Um, no anesthesia is required for the echo MRI, but you again don't get the bone information. Uh, we'll talk a little bit, or Val will talk a little bit about the coefficients of variation using the DEXA system and his experience um, with the Insight system as well um, after the live demonstration. So a little bit more about the Insight system itself. So the system is, um, it's about the size of a small washing machine, I would say. Again, we'll see it in um, real time once we turn the camera on. It is self-shielded. You'll see the integration of the anesthesia. Typically we use isoflurane, but if you wanted to use an injectable anesthesia, that would be fine as well. It is just a standard electrical connection. So you simply plug it into the wall. There's no extra infrastructure required um, with it being self-shielded as well. The workstation is on a Windows 10 system and there is an offline analysis capability where you could take the images offline and perform that analysis back at your um, office as well. The system is ideally suited for longitudinal studies. So we'll see um, some examples of that with Val today and again on June 9th. Um, it is non-invasive. So there's nothing that you need to do to the animal other than light anesthesia to be able to perform the image acquisition. Um, You'll see it's very quick. I'll have Sebastian, one of um, Val's um, lab members, knock down the animal. I'll kind of walk you through what he's doing and you can see how fast that happens. The radiation is very low, so there's no effect on the, I guess the biology or on the model due to the radiation exposure over a longitudinal study. As we talked about, the scan times are very fast. So about 25 seconds and they're quite high resolution. So we get about hundred micron resolution on the animal and there's a very wide um, scan area. So this allows a variety of different animals to be imaged. Mice, rats, similarly sized animals up to about 500 grams. And the team at Osteosis is currently looking into if that can be extended into small rabbits, for example, up to a kilogram or two or three kilograms as well. So we'll hopefully in the future have a bit more information on that. A little more specifics about the system. It does use cone beam x-ray technology, and this is actually what allows the scan time to be um, so fast in that it doesn't have to traverse over the animal to the acquisition. It just um, uses cone beam again to send out the x-ray source across the entire field of view. Um, most of this we've gone over. Um, again, a standard electrical connection and the system itself is self-shielded. So at this point, I'm going to get my colleague Sonica to turn on the camera. So we'll highlight that for you. Okay, so with the camera being on, we can see the system in place. Um, so you can see it sitting right next to the stand anesthesia system. Okay, the workstation is sitting right next to us. You can see that here and I'm here as well. Um, and the anesthesia system is here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the software. 
so you can see it. Um, I will share this in a moment, but right now we wanted you to see everything going on live with the camera. So the software is open. The first thing that we wanna do is run our daily test. So this is using a phantom that comes with the system. It allows us to know that the system is performing well. Okay, so we can see all our historical measurements and the system will let us know right away if it pass, if it fails. So I'm basically just gonna open the door. Okay, I'm gonna place my phantom, which is just this little plastic device that comes with the instrument. We want the label facing towards us and we place it right on the square in the middle. Okay, so with the phantom in place, We've turned the system on just prior. They suggest um, about a 30 minute warm up time. Um, so once we place the phantom in, you can actually see it through the opening in the front of the instrument. I'm now gonna put start daily test and you'll see that it gives me a reminder of how to position the phantom. So if you're forgetting how to position it, it will explain for you. Click okay. What you'll see is when x-rays are being sent from the system, you'll see an indication on the screen that the system is on. There are also lights on the instrument itself that show you that the x-rays are being sent. We can see the progress and the progress bar down here. And once the measurement is complete, we'll have a pop-up window that should say it succeeds. Okay, so daily test success. It will log that information in with everything else and we're ready to go. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna take the phantom out of the instrument. What I wanna do now is position the nose cone because we're gonna use gas anesthesia. I don't want the nose cone in the field of view when it's running the daily test, it will interfere with that signal. So then I just position the nose cone. This is our mouse nose cone. I'll position it where I feel the animal will be placed. Okay, using a bit of tape to hold it into position. Okay, and then I'm going to close the door. Okay, what we want to do now is set up for our imaging. So I'm going to go to the home window. I'm going to go to our animal list. And so here we have the ability to have a study structure if you'd like. So doctor would be our main study. So you can see the Fajardo lab. We can see our demo. You could have a different doctor if you'd like for each individual study that you had. So I'm gonna go into this one. They are password protected. So you would just create your own password. And then within that study or owner, you would have different animal IDs. Okay, so these are just different animals that we would have. I'm going to add our animal for today. So live demo comes up with the previously used name. So I'm gonna say live demo. 19th of May, we can put any information about the animal that we want. We can put how many days, for example, into the study it is, um, any information about the sex. And this comments field allows me to type any information about the model and that will be saved with the data so that in the future you can go back and you can look at um, what was going on with that animal and what that specific animal was. I could go through and I could add as many of these as I want for that day's worth of imaging. Once we've done that, I'm going to double click and that will take me straight into the measurement. Because we're using the anesthesia nose cone, we want to basically tell the system where that nose cone is and apply a mask to it so that it's not taking that nose cone into account when it's making the measurements. So if I come down here and I say apply mask, it's going to bring up a window that says um, this is the current mask position. Obviously that's changed because we had the nose cone moved up and out of the way for our daily test. So I'm going to say I want to run a new one. Okay, the system's making a measurement. We can see the indication that the x-rays are on and our progress in the bottom. Okay, we see our updated image and everything looks good. So I'm going to say apply. So now anytime I take an image with an animal, it will exclude this from the measurements. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna walk you through the animal preparation steps with a stuffed mouse. And then once we've gone through all of that, I'll show you, uh, we'll walk through it with a live animal. So this is our stuffed mouse for today. So our knockdown chamber is 
just in the other end of the lab. So I'll get Sebastian to knock down the animal in the knockdown chamber. And then we'll have the anesthesia system set up here, which if you had a side mounted knockdown chamber, you could use to knock down your animal. Once the animal is asleep um, and at a steady state of respiration, they don't need to be at a surgical plane of anesthesia. They really just need to be still. Um, so uh, quite a low isofluorine level is totally fine. We would then take the animal out of the knockdown chamber and position it inside the instrument. So with our nose cone in position, I would place the animal inside the nose cone. There is scavenging with that nose cone as well. So there's not a buildup of isofluorine into the chamber. The animal would sit there. I would close the system and I would simply start measure. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that right now on the system, we'll wait till we have the animal in position. And as Sonica was showing you, there is actually the window at the front of the instrument that you can actually see the animal. It is lead lined, so you don't need to be concerned um, about radiation coming out, but you're able to see the animal, monitor it, know that it's breathing um, is stable and everything is good. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna turn off the camera and I'm going to share the software screen with you. Perfect, great. So now we can see their software screen in real time. So Sebastian's now actually just taking the animal out of the cage. He's gonna put it into the knockdown chamber. I'm removing the stuffy mouse from the system. Um, so we can do that. Sonica, are there any questions? What is the advantage of DEXA over CT? It's a really interesting question. So CT obviously is gonna be able to give you um, a three-dimensional picture, um, potentially higher resolution, but you're not gonna be able to get down to the measures of bone mineral content and density unless you have an additional software add-on package. The benefit is the time to do the acquisition. This is gonna take 25 seconds to get an image. You'll see that in real time. Um, and cost of a system and complexity of positioning a system as well. Um, so the team here at Brock and perhaps Val will comment on it afterwards does actually have a micro CT system, um, but using the system has proven to be kind of much simpler for them and easily integrated into their studies. So perhaps we'll get Val to comment on that afterwards as well. Okay, so at this point, the mouse is just being knocked down in the chamber. That just takes a few moments as he goes to sleep. The isofluorine has been turned on and is being delivered into the system. So once the animal is at a safe level of anesthesia, Sebastian will move it over and position it into the system for me. Okay, so it looks like he's on his way over. So you can see here some of the settings in terms of the low and the high energy for the DEXA. These are things that we don't change on the instrument simply because they're set for the DEXA imaging. Sebastian's now just positioning the animal in the nose cone, right in the center. So we see that X marks the spot. That's exactly where Sebastian wants to center the animal, putting its nose into the nose cone, nice and splayed out for us. So we have all of the bones clearly visible on our image. You will see on the screen that there is this option for DR mode, um, that's digital radiography. And so that gives you the option to do just a digital x-ray image and the plate that the animal's positioned on can actually be moved up or down within the um, instrument to give you better um, magnification if you'd like on the, on the animal. It's okay. Um, the animal just woke up. So Sebastian's gonna put him back in the knockdown chamber and get him ready. He was putting the eye ointment on just to help um, protect the eyes during the imaging. Um, so again, the digital radiography is possible with the system. It's an add-on feature and we can move the platform up and down. If you want to rotate it over, Sebastian, it's no problem. I'll redo the mask. Yep. Yep. So the nose cone, the way that I positioned it was tilted up. And so it was difficult for the animal to be effectively anesthetized. So we're just going to reposition that and I'll redo the mask. Perfect. Great. So if I want to redo the mask, I just click on apply mask and I'm going to push new because Sebastian just changed it ever so slightly. 
again, we'll see that the X-ray is actively on. And again, there are lights on the instrument to allow us to see that as well. Um, there is also an emergency stop on the instrument. If for some reason you needed to pull the animal out, um, you would hit the emergency stop. The X-rays would stop immediately and allow you to open the door. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply. Yep. And Sebastian's gonna bring over uh, the mouse for us. Perfect. So he's just positioning the nose cone. Great. And when Dr. Fajardo is talking about um, the data that they've acquired, he will actually talk a little bit about coefficient of variation in um, placement of the animal. So I'll show you some results. He's waking up his tail. Just put his nose in further. Um, I'll show you some results where they repositioned the animal, I think it was six times um, sequentially, and we can see the consistency in the data. Okay, so the animal's in position, I can visually see him, so I'm looking for any signs that he's waking up for the tail raising and things that we saw earlier. Right now I'm going to start the measurement, so I'm pushing start. We can see that the x-ray is being taken, we can see the progress here, it should take about 25 seconds, the mouse is moving. Um, so we're going to hit stop and he's going to take the animal. So we can see that um, the nose cone has moved as well. So I'm going to reposition that. I apologize. This normally in our practice yesterday went smoothly. Always for a live demo, we encounter fun tests. So I'm going to go back to the measurement window. I'm going to reapply the mask because we repositioned the nose cone. Okay, I hit the emergency stop, so I'm gonna have to, I believe, restart the system. Okay, and I will most likely have to restart the software as well. That was, I hit the emergency stop so that the animal didn't wake up inside the system, so bear with me. The animal is fairly contained in there, so I probably could have just waited for the acquisition to finish. Okay, I'm going to reshare my screen with you if I don't already have it. Perfect. I'm going to move the nose cone out of the way and just redo that daily test as we've restarted the software. So daily test, start daily test. I have the phantom in position. Okay, so we're just finishing that daily test. Okay, test has succeeded. Remove the phantom, position that nose cone back in place. Yeah, okay. Sebastian's taking a look. Okay, I'm going to go back into the demo. I'm going to go back into this animal. I'm going to apply the mask so that we can update the mask position. Um, And then Sebastian's going to come and reposition the animal for us. He's just putting the eye ointment back on the mouse. Closing the door. I can see the animal's doing well. And I'm going to take the measurement. 
Okay, so we can see the progress across the bottom of the screen. Okay, we can see the resulting image. It's just doing all the calculations for us and performing that second x-ray. I actually hear a tone in my ear when it's taken both of them. So now everything's complete and Sebastian can take the animal out of the instrument and place it back in its cage. So that's really how fast the acquisition is. So then what we can see, sorry, I'm gonna sit back on my chair, is the image that we took of the animal. The purple that you're seeing over the mask is that applied mask feature that I did initially just to have that removed from the data analysis. So the system gives us this X-ray absorption image. We also get the image of where the bone mineral density was detected using those equations that we showed from before and the color overlay. So this is the map. So this is quite a young animal. There's not a lot of fat, which is appearing in um, red and the lead mass, sorry, is in um, green. If I wanna change that color overlay, I simply left click on the image. I can remove the bone map. I can remove the lean mass and see only the fat, or I can remove the fat and see only the lean mass. There also is the option to change the color of either the lean and the fat mass. So you have those options uh, presented here for you. Now, if we want to take a look at the measurements that come from the system, if I double click on ROI, we can see the measurements. So RO1 is always going to be your entire animal. Uh, so we again get bone mineral density, bone mineral content, the area in centimeters squared, the tissue area, the fat percentage, the fat and gram, the lean mass, and the total weight of the animal as well. If I want to draw specific regions of interest, I likely want to zoom in on my animal. I'm going to do so from the x-ray image. I'm simply going to right click. And then I'm able to draw a region of interest around the specific animal and I can click OK. So here we have a nice zoomed in image of the animal. So what I can do then is draw a variety of regions of interest. So I can draw, for example, a region of interest around the femur. So I'm just left clicking and then right clicking to lock that down. I can draw another region of interest, again, up to seven regions of interest. If, for example, I wanna draw on the lumbar vertebrae, you can choose what level with the resolution of the system, you can see the individual vertebrae quite clearly on this animal. This animal does not have an ear tag, but if it did, and I wanted to have an exclusion region of interest, I would come up to the right-hand side of the image and our exclusion regions of interest are gonna show up in purple. Okay, let's pretend that he had two ear tags for whatever reason. Um, if I wanna then recalculate the data, I would just simply click on the region of interest. We see our image that has our different ROIs labeled on it, and we can see the results that are coming from those regions of interest. Okay. If I wanted to make a linear measurement, for example, the length of the femur for some type of um, analysis in the future, I could do so. I'm simply going to come in and I'm going to left click and left click. I can measure the other femur as well. And then from here, I'd want to export this image to keep those data um, available to me. So to export the image, once I'm on it, I would hit Control Shift I. And I'm going to export that image as either a JPEG, um, bitmap, or TIFF. I can click OK. I'm going to put this one onto the desktop for us. Okay. If I want to export the data from my regions of interest, I'm going to do Control Shift E, and that's going to come out either as CSV or text file. I'm going to take it out as CSV. And again, I'll put it onto the desktop for us. Okay, we'll take a look at those in a second. If I done um, many animals within my study and I wanted to export all of the data from uh, that day, for example, or from the study if I hadn't exported it yet, I would come back to my animal list and I would simply say control shift E, take it out as CSV, and then it gives me the information of where it's going to go. I can change that should I need to. And I can click on enable measurement date range 
If I don't enable the date range and change these and I click okay, I'm gonna get data from everything within this study folder or doctor's name. Okay, so you just choose how you want to export your data. We can go back and we can take a look at the data that I did just export. So we have the image that I exported that has the linear measurements on it. That's available to us, as is all of the data from um, that one animal. So this is um, opening up a notepad, but you could open it up in Excel as well. Uh, so you would get all the measurements for all of the different regions of interest there, and you can then compile your data as needed um, within your study. Okay, within that also comes out um, the image of those regions of interest located here. Okay, so this is your export of the image so you know exactly where those regions of interest were located and those linear measurements that we had made um, on the same animal as well. Okay, um, jumping now to something that Val will talk a little bit about, but I want to show you how we can visualize that within the system if i go to the fajardo lab um, study these are all the studies that they've taken but let's jump down to the um, test data for the mouse if i go to sorry the analysis we can see that they made one two three four five six different measurements and if i jump between them you can see where the animal was positioned. These were all taken on the same day, but we're just done by repositioning the animal to look at the coefficient of variation that would be affected by the animal's position. So again, same animal, just six different positions um, with the data reported and Val will show some of this data and the multiple animals that they did it with. If I go to the history tab, we can then also see here that specific um, bone mineral density and the fat mass as we see it over time. If I had drawn multiple regions of interest, which were not done on this animal, I could change the region of interest and see all of that here. Okay. Um, are there any questions that are relating to the software that I can help to answer right now? Um, there's a few people that I noticed raised their hands. If you can enter your questions in the chat or the Q&A dialog box, that would be really helpful for us to be able to address them for you. At this point, I'm going to see if Val can unmute himself, and I will share yep. his slides. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey, thanks, Tanya. Um, so as Tanya mentioned, uh, we've had the system for about two months now, and uh, really easy to use. Um, easily integrated into our research program. So as Tanya mentioned, I'm going to be showing some data on CV or coefficient of variation, and also uh, some data on uh, a project that we have with low dose lithium supplementation and body composition in mice. So I didn't get to vote on the poll as a panelist, um, but I'll talk about the main uses for us for the, uh, the uh, small animal DEXA. So, we would like to use it for body composition, mainly fat and lean mass. So to help with our ongoing projects uh, related to obesity, but also muscular dystrophy. Again, with COVID-19, we have to change plans and ideally or hopefully we'll be presenting that data on the June 9th webinar. Um, I'll show you some data coupling the body composition data, particularly the lean mass with the metabolic cage data that we also have here in collaboration with Dr. Rebecca McPherson. We're also interested in uh, measuring bone structure, so bone mineral density and content, all these things that Tanya showed you uh, earlier in this webinar. So we've got some collaborations, ongoing collaborations with uh, NASA and some European scientists for real and simulated microgravity, looking at the effects of highland suspension or space flights on musculoskeletal health. And we're specifically interested in the effects of GSK3 inhibition uh, with lithium on promoting osteogenic signaling. Unfortunately, I won't have any data to show you in, in this with, uh, with this project, but that's okay. I can show you the coefficient of variations uh, that uh, we produced, uh, actually Sebastian produced. Um, in this case, this is a female mouse, 10 months old. And I'm gonna show a bunch of these tables here. So I'll just get you sorted out here. We've got bone mineral density, all of the measures that Tanya was talking about and showing you throughout this, uh, this demo 
Then we have bone mineral content all the way to total weight from left to right. The number of values is six because we've just simply repeatedly measured uh, the same mouse uh, to get a, a mean, a standard deviation, a standard error to mean, but more important to us, a coefficient of variation. And we're pretty pleased with these numbers, all less than 3% in the bone structure um, side of things. Really, really impressed with the body composition CVs, all less than 1%. So we're really happy with these uh, CVs. This is in a female mouse. Now looking at a male mouse, uh, similar findings. In this case, it's a male mouse that's about a year old. Six uh, values, again, because we're just repeatedly scanning the same mouse uh, to generate that mean standard deviation, the standard error of the mean, and again, more importantly, the coefficient of variation. So I'll just draw your eyes to the last row here. Again, you can see less than 3% in the bone uh, structure side of things, less than 1%. Again, really impressed with this. Uh, data less than 1% with the body composition side of things. As Tanya mentioned, uh, we also uh, did a placement CV test where we again measured the same mouse six times, uh, but before measuring or scanning the mouse, we repositioned the mouse uh, each time just to see how robust this system really is. And again, we're really quite pleased with the data and the bone structure side of things at or below 3% and the coefficient of variation. So really, really good. Uh, again, really impressed with the body composition uh, CVs um, at or less than 1%. So really happy with uh, the CVs and the performance so far. We also uh, use uh, rats from time to time. So we thought it'd be uh, good to look at uh, the CVs, looking at a male rat, in this case, three to four months old. Um, so same table, bone mineral density from left to right, all the way to total weight. In this case, we've actually done it seven times, so repeatedly scanned the same rat. This is non-repositioned, so just clicking scan seven times. And the numbers are actually really impressive in the rat, so it's slightly uh, larger rodents. We see less than 1% for the bone structure, and again, less than 1% for the body composition. We then, of course, did the repositioning CV, so before each scan, we repositioned the rat. Um, and the numbers are still really, really good, less than 3% in the uh, bone structure, less than 1% in the body composition, things like fat percent, lean percent, and total uh, body mass. So these numbers are really, really easy to obtain. And uh, from what we've seen, uh, the system seems to be really robust as well, which is nice for us. So now we'll move over to um, applying this uh, system into some of our ongoing work. Uh, what I'll show you is a project in collaboration with Dr. Rebecca McPherson. Uh, she's over here. She's an associate professor in the Department of Health Sciences. And together, my lab and her lab, this is actually my arm we cut out. Uh, my lab and her lab, we're trying to stimulate energy expenditure to combat obesity. So can we increase energy expenditure to attenuate adiposity and the deleterious effects that come with that, things like insulin resistance and glucose intolerance. So one of the ways that we are focused on in terms of increasing energy expenditure, and I'm, I'm not gonna dive into the cellular details, is uh, to treat mice with a very low dose of lithium. So this dose is 10 milligrams per kilogram per day. It's a really low dose. We provide it in their drinking water. It results in a serum concentration of 0.02 millimolar. And we treat them for six to 12 weeks. I've got six underlined because I'm going to be showing you some data from six weeks. Um, and in the future, show you some data from uh, 10 and 12 weeks on the next webinar as well. So just to highlight this dose has also been shown to reduce high fat diet induced weight gain by others. And this was published in 2010 in vascular pharmacology. So the data that I'm gonna show you below here, this is all in the chow fed state. So there's no high fat diet yet but we're really interested to uh, get the body composition data once we start uh, feeding the mice lithium and a high fat diet. But this is energy expenditure data in collaboration with Dr. Rebecca McPherson who has a Promethean uh, metabolic cage system. And so we'll just focus your attention on panel A here. On the X axis or the horizontal axis, we've got time. So this is showing the light and dark cycles each 12 hours. So this is a whole day. 
And then on the y-axis or the vertical axis, we've got uh, VO2 or oxygen consumption. So our indirect measure of energy expenditure. And what we can see here is that clearly the red line, which represents the lithium chloride group, have elevated energy expenditure throughout the light and dark periods. And this result is quite reproducible. We've done it uh, two or three times now. And uh, over here on panel B, you could see the statistics showing signif uh, significant differences in both the dark, light, and the average daily period. Now, one thing I want you to note is that this energy expenditure data at right now is normalized to body mass. And this is typically what you see in our field, normalizing energy expenditure to body mass. So one of the things that we asked was, does this increase in energy expenditure, well, does it translate to a change in body composition? Presumably, you'd expect a, a reduction in percent fat mass and potentially a, uh, an increase in percent lean mass. Again, this is in just the cow fed state and just six weeks of low dose lithium feeding. And you can see the nice color maps that are, are given by the system. And what we see here, although not uh, different uh, statistically, the direction is there. We see uh, a potential decrease in percent fat mass and potential increase in percent lean mass. Again, this is at six weeks with just chow feeding. So we will reassess this at 12 weeks of feeding uh, and to see if this um, will change statistically. And that's one of the highlights of this system, I believe, is the, the ease with which you can carry out or conduct non-invasive longitudinal studies. And it's a really um, big bonus for us in the side of metabolism, but also in musculoskeletal health. And so keep this in mind as well too, this percent lean mass, because I'm gonna get back to that point of normalizing the energy expenditure to body mass. And one of the things that we know and we're mindful of is that as you increase fat-free mass here on the x-axis, um, as you increase fat-free mass, you will increase energy expenditure. So in this case, showing basal metabolic rate, um, but the increase in fat-free mass will increase energy expenditure in different physical states as well. And so what's, perhaps more accurate in many cases is to normalize the energy expenditure to fat-free mass. Now, normally we wouldn't be able to do this unless we had both systems, the metabolic cage uh, system and also a small animal DEXA. And what we find is that the same graph, time here on the x-axis and energy expenditure, but now normalized to fat-free mass, the red line showing the lithium chloride uh, group, we can see again clearly elevations in energy expenditure, even when normalized to fat-free mass. And this is good for us because now it tells us that maybe there's something happening at a cellular that can account for this increase in energy expenditure. And we're uh, really looking forward to publishing some of our data in, in, in that aspect in the near future. But I'll leave it there for now. And I'll just let you know that um, our, Yes, so the N for the uh, low dose lithium studies were 10 to 12, 10, 10 for lithium chloride and 12 for control. Um, so for the June 9th online webinar, um, we will be showing some of the data that we will collect uh, from the D2MDX mouse model, which is a preclinical a uh, mouse model for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and will be particularly focused on lean mass and bone structure, so bone mineral density and bone mineral content. And we'll also also show you some. Um, oh, we'll also show you some longitudinal uh, data with the low dose lithium supplementation study. So to be continued on that front. Perfect. Thanks all so much for um, going through those slides. We'll now jump into uh, the last audience poll. Uh, and we're hoping just to get a little bit more information if you would like us to reach out to you um, about the system and talking more about your research needs. If you have um, a desire to get any additional information about the system, we'd be happy to share this with you. Um, or just let us know if you were here to learn more about interesting technologies that we have. I'd be happy to um, connect and talk with you about the DEXA system, but if, uh, if that's not appropriate, that's okay as well. I'll give everyone just a few more moments to answer these. Um, it would be great if you're able to 
also use this time to enter any questions that you may have in the Q&A dialog box and I can work through them um, myself. And also if there's any for Val, I'm happy to bring him back into the conversation as well. Okay, so I'll give everyone just a few more minutes to answer those questions. Perfect, thanks again for taking the time to answer that for us. Perfect, so now I'm gonna open it up to the Q&A session. I think we have answered most of the questions that have come through. I did see a few people raise their hands. So please, again, feel free to enter your questions that you may have had in the chat or the Q&A dialog box and I can work through them. We do still have about 15 minutes time. Uh, so feel free, we can use up that time. If there are no additional questions that come in, um, we will obviously give everyone back 15 minutes in their calendar, which everyone appreciates these days, I'm sure. Um, so at this point, I do wanna thank everyone for um, taking the time to, to join us today. And um, I hope that the information that we've shared is helpful for you to understand how simple it is to use the system, talking through some of um, Val's initial um, results with the system. Like we've mentioned a couple of times, we will be um, doing another demo on June 9th. The registration information is in the same location for that um, demonstration. We'll be back here with Val and we will have some of those MDX mice that were delayed due to COVID and we'll have an update on that lithium ion um, feeding study as well. So at this point, again, enter any questions out there, feel free to reach to, out to us at Syntica um, and expect a follow-up email in the next day or two with access to the recording as well. And we will speak with you all again soon and please feel free to join us at any other Syntica instrumentation event in the near future. Thanks again and take care.